welcome back to uh, part five of the, the video and what we'll do is now change to our layout to uh, set up the rest of the the, uh, the the drawing so I'm going to, I'm trying to get to my layout one I have the screen a bit squashed for for the screen capture purposes so I'm I'm using the icons down here to try and try and access layout one so there's a small downwards arrow this is dropped off the screen but I'm clicking layout one okay now there is some setup already here you can see there is a viewport automatically created for us so we can change that onto our viewport layer so we click the viewport put it onto the viewport layer and escape now I want to produce the drawing on an A3 piece of paper that's the one I'll try first so if you right click layout one go to page setup manager then modify and I'm going to choose I'm going to choose a PDF maker for this and there's one built into AutoCAD okay it's called DWG to PDF Okay, the paper size once changed to A3. Okay, with PDF you've got choice of pretty much all paper sizes. So I'm just looking for regular ISO A3. There's so many here to, to see. So ISO A3 420 wide by 297 high. Okay, we plot the layout, that's fine. Okay, and then we get to this bit here. This is the, the the kind of complicated bit. So we want the drawing to end up with black lines. At the moment on screen everything's multicolored. So we need to create a pen settings file that will translate the colors on screen to different thicknesses of black pen. Okay, so let's do, let's try and run through this reasonably quickly. So instead of none, change this to ACAD. Okay? and then we edit the ACAD CTB okay this looks a bit scary but it's okay firstly we'll change every pen to be a line weight of 0.1 okay so color one's already selected drag the list down hold shift and pick color 255 and then change the line weight to 0.1 Okay, let's scroll back up and deal with the top nine pens now. Okay, colors one to nine. I'm going to make them all print out black. Okay, everything above nine is going to print in whatever color it is here. We've used color 253 for our shading, for our solid fill. So that's going to print gray. That's okay. Okay, now I want to introduce a bit of variation in line weight. So I'm going to make color 2 a pen weight of 0.25. I'm going to make color 6 a very thick pen. I'm going to go for 0.7. So that when we look at the end of the beam, we'll see a thick line, which is what you'd want to see. And color 7, which is white on screen, I'm going to make that a pen thickness of 0.45. So that's the only variation I've added in. Most of these first nine are thin pens, but then we've got thicker, thicker, even thicker, and thickest. Okay, now what you do is save this, and you need to save it to a CTB file that you're going to be able to use in the future. So if we save as, and for this one I'm going to call it my pens okay click save save and close and then change it from the ACAD CTB to my pens okay you can call it whatever you want as long as you can identify it in the future so that's the page setup done uh, landscape orientation is fine, that'll work good. So we'll click OK, 
and close. Okay, now I can expand the viewport to fit the piece of paper because the paper's got bigger. So you click once on the viewport edge, click on the grip, you want to turn ortho off and turn your object snaps off and you can drag till we fill the we're going just inside the dashed printing margin do the same on this side now double click inside the viewport and use your mouse hold the middle mouse button so you can center the drawing because this is the bit we're, we're going we're going to print out and then we want to choose the scale now mine is just off the view here it might let me pick it okay it is it's luckily just sneaking into the view there I'm going to go for a scale of 1 to 5 okay again hold the middle mouse button and bring the drawing into view better okay you can see here that I've, I'm, I'm kind of bigger too big for the for the viewport I don't want to use a different scale I need to go back to model space and stretch things down till I can see these break markers a bit clearer so I want to go back to model space and I'll use the stretch command now so s return select from right to left and return put ortho on base point anywhere you want and we're just going to make this drawing a bit more compact top and bottom okay return again to bring back stretch select return base point anywhere you want drag down the uh, the, the number is hiding the object that I'm stretching which is awkward okay and let's do the same at the side we're a bit too long on this side so return again select return click and drag okay let's have a look at layout one again that looks better got a bit more breathing space now I can see what's happening I can hold the middle mouse button and maybe center the drawing just to get it balanced now double click outside and let's do a print preview to see how this CTB file is affecting what we see here okay remember the pink there should end up with a thick line the cyan green red should all end up with a thin line and the text will be pretty much as it is okay so if you go to the plot command you can right click layout one and plot and then preview okay can you see how the viewport has disappeared because that's on a non printing layer if I zoom in closer we can start to see the line weight manifesting itself nice and thick there for the bit of steel that's chopped through the solid fill hatching is gray as it should be I'm not seeing broken lines though see here and down the middle I'm not seeing the dashes that I saw before so let's rectify that so escape and cancel let's zoom in a bit closer so we can see what happens so we need to adjust the line type scale command here so it's LTS and return and instead of 2 let's maybe try 0.5 that was a pretty good guess okay 0.5 is looking about right that looks tidy okay and the final stages now is to add some annotation to this so we're looking at titles and a few more words on the drawing okay so we can use individual lines of text or multiple lines of text I prefer individual lines to be honest I find it easier to control so and the text button here I'm using single line 
Okay, let's get in a bit closer. And I'm going to start my first word over here. And it's asking me how high do I want to make the text. Okay, 2.5 millimeters sounds very small, but it's very legible. Okay, 2.5 is okay, so I'll press enter. Okay, it's asking me if I want to rotate the text. I don't, so I press enter again. And the wording over here, this will be the size of the beam, so this, we've got to type these incorrectly. So it's 533 by 210 by 82 UB. So 533 by 210 by 83 UB. Okay, return, return again to stop the command. Now, I should have changed layers before I did that, so I'm going to change that word, those words, onto layer annotate. Press escape, then make annotate your current layer. Okay, let's just put a line identifying what this word is, is pointing at. Okay, I could put the text here, but it's going to clash with all sorts of lines. So just a simple line from the words, take ortho off. And I can just make it touch the, the, the beam top there. Doesn't have to be too accurate. Okay, now the lines for dimensions and likes are red, so I should make this red as well. So we use the index colors red. Okay, now I'll put a piece of text in here identifying that this is the column. So it's the command again. We want a single line of text. Start about here. 2.5 is fine for the height. Rotation 0, return again. And this one is 305 by 305 by. 198 UC. Return twice. It's not really tidily centered there, so we'll move it, pick the word and return. Base point can be anywhere because you'll be able to see where it's going and we'll place it in that position. Okay, a couple more words to put on. So we'll identify this beam by just writing underneath it. Could write on the flange there, that might be better actually. So single line of text, just above the flange there. Return, return, and this is 305 by 165 by 46 UB. Return twice. No need to move that one, that's in a reasonable position. Okay, final two pieces of text. So, single line, and I'll start my piece of text just about here. Okay, height the same, rotation the same, and this is 18 millimeter bolt connections. Return twice. Perhaps that needs moved slightly just to make it line in with that line. And I've already identified that this is a plate, so I think I can get away with without identifying any more on that. Okay, that's a reasonable amount of information there. And the final thing to add is a main title. So we'll go for a single line text again. Start about this point, but we'll make the text a bit bigger this time. Let's double the size of it. Let's have it five millimeters high. So five return, no rotation. So enter again. And the title here, beams to column connection detail. Press return. And I'll indicate the scale at this point. Scale 1 to 5 on A3. So people people know that if they're holding an A3, they've got the drawing to scale. If they're holding an A4, they know it's not to scale. Okay, return twice. 
that text is hanging off the edge of the page there so we need to move it move both at the same time and return pick a base point make sure it's inside the grey dashed lines and when you're in paper space if you use Z return A return it fills the view with the piece of paper so Z return A return we can see what we've created okay let's do a final plot preview so if you right click layout one do plot and preview and there's our finished drawing obviously we could add more detail if we wanted but it's clean it's tidy there's a good hierarchy in the lines there I can tell that this is being sliced through and that the rest of the information is in the distance. These are hidden lines because that those bolts are going through beyond where I can see. And it's basically saying everything that we need to. Okay, press escape to stop the plot preview. And then when you OK, it will generate the PDF. Okay. I'm going to cancel that and cancel the plot preview and that is the end of the tutorial thank you very much